Industrial 3D print manufacturer Stratasys recently filed a lawsuit against Bamboo Labs, an up-and-comer. And most of the commentary that I've seen so far online has been excellent commentary by engineers, but not by lawyers. So if you've been looking for a lawyer to chime in, law professor Laser to the rescue, I'll explain some of the basics of patent law that are necessary to understand this case and also talk about what the potential impact is on consumers and what could happen next in this case or what related cases could be filed. Let's get ready to learn innovation law. The patents in this lawsuit are covering a lot of different aspects of 3D printing technology, including things like the use of purge towers when switching between multiple materials types, things like heated beds with a polymer coating that allow for easy release of your prints, as well as networked 3D printing and monitoring, such as monitoring the build from a remote location. Why do we think this has been filed now? Well, Stratasys has focused for decades on the industrial application of 3D printers and has offered its products for sale for tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars to industrial users. Now, they generally have not been concerned about the consumer 3D printing market, but Bamboo Labs, especially some of its newer models like the X1E, are starting to intrude upon Stratasys's industrial user base. And so Stratasys likely filed this patent lawsuit to try to break up Bamboo's ability to compete among industrial users. There's also a hint of this in the complaint. Stratasys says that Bamboo Labs lacks some of the network security that's found in the Stratasys systems, but that's not really relevant to a patent lawsuit and not relevant to any of the patents that are at issue here. So it seems like this was stuffed in as a way to try to take a jab at Bamboo Labs that might dissuade some of the industrial customers of Stratasys from switching to Bamboo Labs. Alternatively, it's possible that Stratasys is seeking a cross-licensing deal with Bamboo Labs and that by bringing this lawsuit, it might be able to strike a deal with Bamboo that allows Bamboo to use its patents and in turn allows Stratasys to use Bamboo's patents so that both of them would be able to continue to improve their products and operate in the marketplace. This could involve some transfer of money from one company to the other. Typically, the one that has the strongest patents would be receiving more in that situation. But sometimes these cross-licensing deals are done without any compensation because the quality of the patents are pretty similar uh, between the two entities. How is this going to impact the consumer? While it's possible that Bamboo Labs could change some of the designs that it's using to try to design around infringement, if it believes that these patents are valid and that they are likely to be upheld, it's probably going to either obtain a license to the patents or it's going to try to design its products differently to try to avoid infringing the patents. This may be through small modifications that try to get around the narrow aspects of each claim. Some might also be concerned that networked printers in particular are going to be able to be updated remotely. This is a possibility, but we'll have to wait and see what the court says and if an injunction is granted. An injunction is something that Stratasys is requesting in this case. And if it's granted uh, by the judge after trial, then that would mean that Bamboo is no longer allowed to sell products that potentially infringe on these patents. The lawyers that Stratasys is using here are from McDermott, Will & Emery, a prominent patent law firm. But notably, the lawyers that they hired have expertise not only in district court proceedings, but also proceedings in other jurisdictions that may be relevant here. So those lawyers have experience in the United States Patent and Trademark Office post-grant proceedings and in the USITC, International Trade Commission, which handles blocking imports of potentially infringing goods. Now, we haven't yet seen cases get filed in this matter in the ITC or in the USPTO, but I believe they're likely coming. How will that happen? So in response to this lawsuit, Bamboo Labs is likely to file a proceeding in the patent office to try to claim that the patents are invalid and should no longer be able to be used by Stratasys to assert infringement. They're going to try to get cancellation of those patents through the proceedings at the patent office called inter partes review. 
This is a review proceeding that's available to try to invalidate patents based on novelty or obviousness, trying to say that there are other technologies that existed before the key priority date of these patents that would render them invalid, either because they're identical to those previous technologies or merely obvious improvements on those technologies to somebody who is skilled in the art of 3D printing. Now, we would also potentially see a lawsuit brought by Stratasys in the U.S. International Trade Commission. This can happen alongside the district court proceeding, but basically this would be a proceeding that would try to block imports of new goods that are coming into the United States uh, from China in this instance. The USITC does not issue damages awards, but it can grant a exclusion order that would prevent all Bamboo Labs products that are accused of infringement from being imported if infringement is proven and the patents are not found invalid in that proceeding. The filing here was made in the Eastern District of Texas, which is an interesting choice. This is traditionally a patentee-friendly venue, in part because of some of the procedural rules that stop patent defendants from defending against their patent at an early stage of the case. Specifically, Judge Gilstrap, who is hearing this case, is very experienced with handling patent matters, but his procedures generally result in far fewer summary judgment determinations and early motions to terminate the case on the basis of questions that can be decided as a matter of law, like, for example, are these patents too abstract to be patent eligible or other bases to dismiss these lawsuits at an early stage? Judge Gilstrap grants roughly half of those motions as judges in other districts. Judge Gilstrap also has a relatively fast docket, in part because this district has very few criminal cases relative to some other districts that are going to put patent cases on the back burner. There was a time period when Judge Gilstrap was handling over a thousand patent cases per year. That's changed in response to some venue rules as a result of a case called TC Heartland that was decided by the Supreme Court. But those changes in venue rules are not going to apply here because Bamboo Labs is a foreign defendant. Those rules require that if you're going to file a case against a defendant in the United States, it has to be in a venue or a location where that person or that entity has a place of business and is infringing. But here, when you have a foreign defendant, those limitations, which in the past have restricted Eastern District of Texas as a good filing location, are not going to impede Stratasys from filing this case here. And it's likely that the Eastern District of Texas is going to be able to maintain jurisdiction. Interestingly, the Eastern District of Texas is also a good location to file for those who are trying to avoid the Patent Office from taking this matter on. Because of the fast docket in the Eastern District of Texas, some people have been able to get out of proceedings at the Patent Office by saying that the district court is going to decide that case before the Patent Office can get to it, and therefore the Patent Office should not conduct a post-grant review of the validity of those patents. That's likely the strategy that Stratus has had here when deciding to file in Eastern District of Texas. They are trying to avoid this getting decided by the Patent Office. One might ask, why are there two lawsuits being filed here? We have two lawsuits with several patents in each lawsuit. It's probably because of trying to strategize how do we handle issues like stays, meaning the case gets paused if this goes to the Patent Office. And so it might be the case that they are trying to divide up the patents among those that are most likely to get decided by the Patent Office and allowing some of those other ones to proceed. But we really don't know exactly why they filed it as two lawsuits here. Now, if you want to, I can go into more depth on the subject matter of the patents at issue here in another video. So comment below if you want that from a patent lawyer to actually walk through some of these claims. At a very high level, these claims relate to some basic fundamentals of 3D printing that were filed in the 2010s typically for most of these patents. So it sounds to a modern uh, reader of these lawsuits that this seems like you shouldn't be able to get patents on this kind of stuff. But in 2010, that might not have been the case. And so the prior art search or the decision about whether these are novel or obvious are going to be based on novelty and obviousness 
to someone who is skilled in the art at the time of the patent filing, or the priority date, in fact, which could be before the filing in the U.S. The patents at issue are going to relate to technologies like a heated bed with a polymer coating, networked connected monitoring of a print, including 3D scanning of a print during a networked connected print, and also applications that improve the quality of the print, like how the printing occurs, how purge towers are implemented, and other key aspects of these 3D printing technologies. I hope you enjoyed that summary. If you have any other questions that you want to ask a patent lawyer about these 3D printing technologies, comment below, and I will do my best to make another video covering those topics as a follow-up. Thanks.